Welcome to this video on case law, element A2 of the NIBOSH National Diploma Syllabus. In this video, I'm just going to be covering the three cases that are required for element A2. We're not going to be covering the syllabus. It's just going to be a little bit of basic revision to help you remember and understand, because this is a subject that always comes up during the exams. You can use the slide for yourself just as a bit of a memory jogger. You've got three levels of duty of care. You've got the absolute duty, practicable and reasonably practicable. So let's get straight into them. We're going to take a look at absolute duty first, which is the highest level of duty of care that can be imposed. And make sure that you take a look out for it because it's always denoted by that little word there, which is shall. So Stark was the postman and the post office gave him a bicycle. And while he was riding at the front brake broke and he went head over heels over the handlebars and he was seriously injured. Now we go back to the bottom there where we got shell and that is under the provision and use of work equipment regs. It says every employer shall ensure that work equipment is so constructed or adapted as to be suitable for the purpose for which it is used or provided. The court found that this was an absolute duty and that the post office hadn't done so and therefore they ruled in favor of Stark. The post office did argue that the work equipment directive and the framework directive to which Pure was intended to give effect contemplated something less than the absolute duty. This argument was rejected and Stark's claim won. Our next level of care that we have is practicable. And the case which decided this was ADSEP versus KNL Steel Founders and Engineers Limited, and this was all the way back in 1953. And the legislation which applies to this case was your Factories Act of 1937. And he was working in a foundry and was shoveling casting sands through a grate. And obviously, in doing so, he was breathing up all the dust. And from this, he contracted pneumoconiosis. Once the condition had been diagnosed, the employer then installed an extractor. But he didn't install the extractor as a result of his employee becoming ill. He installed the extractor because this was the first time the use was thought of for that environment. So ADSET took him to court and said, in terms of Section 47, all practicable measures shall be taken to protect the persons employed against inhalation. And the courts found in favor of K&L Steel Founders and Engineers Limited, because prior to the time when they actually installed the extractors, its use wasn't thought of for that application within the industry. It wasn't general practice. And in order for something to be practicable, its use must be known for the application it's intended for. And that resulted in K&L Steel Founders and Engineers Limited winning that case. Our final level of duty of care is reasonably practicable, and it's demonstrated by Edwards versus the National Coal Board in 1949. And this is also actually where our understanding of reasonably practicable comes from. This is a regular exam question, and they will ask you to refer to case law for the definition. So this is the one that you're going to quote. A bit of background, Edwards died as a result of a collapse in an unsupported roadway. Other sections of this road were in fact supported, but this place where he was at was not. And Lord Asquith stated that the quantum of risk versus the quantum of sacrifice should have been reviewed. And he found in favor of Edwards because the National Coal Board could not provide any evidence that the cost to support this section of roadway would outweigh the benefits to preventing injury or death. Other sections of that roadway were supported adequately, but those sections didn't need it. So this section of roadway, by whatever means, obviously had a higher chance of collapse and required those supports. Our piece of legislation that we're looking at is Section 2, which is your general duties of employers to their employees. And it states there, it shall be the duty of every employer to ensure so far as is reasonably practicable, the health, safety, and welfare at work of all his employees. 
Now, it's important to get a full grasp on exactly the reasonably practicable side of this case. So what the judge was actually saying when he made the ruling on this was that if the cost to reduce the dangers is so disproportionate to the level of risk that there is and the likelihood of it occurring, then obviously those measures don't need to be taken. And it's also important to remember that the size of the company and its financial resources have absolutely no bearing on whether a matter is reasonably practicable or not. And that's the end of our case law for element A2. Thanks so much for watching.